Coming up on today's episode of AMA Drone Report. First, the good news about FAA reauthorization. And then the bad news about FAA reauthorization. And FAI World Drone Racing Championship is one month away. Hello, I'm Laura Hudson. Welcome to Airborne's AMA Drone Report on Aero TV, a weekly news program covering the recreational drone world in partnership with the Academy of Model Aeronautics, one of the oldest and most respected aviation organizations in the world, with more than 200,000 members and 2,400 clubs across the country. FAA reauthorization is all but a done deal now, awaiting all but a certain signature from the President. And now the work begins in earnest, because the model aviation community had some wins and some losses in the massive 1,200-page bill. First, let's look at the good news. The Five Mile Airport notification rings have been removed, which is a burdensome and often misinterpreted mandate placed on our hobby. Congress more clearly defines community-based organization and tasks FAA to recognize CBOs. CBOs like AMA are given a more prominent role in shaping future regulations. Congress codifies elements of AMA safety programming into law, including the use of first-person view. There are no prescriptive remote ID equipage mandates, which allows AMA to continue to champion for a more reasonable approach and threshold. Congress allocated $1 million every year to help support education campaigns such as Know Before You Fly, co-founded by AMA. And Congress has recognized the distinction between members of a CBO, like AMA and those outside the membership guidelines and programming of a CBO. Congress then tasked the FAA to consider different operating parameters for each recreational community. In the next general minute, let's take a brief look at a few of the shorter stories that are making the rounds of the small UAS and hobby drone communities. ParaZero Israel LTD has announced that the first FAA waiver for flight over people with a parachute system was granted to a UAS operator using the ParaZero Safe Air system. The waiver for Part 107.39A has been granted to Botlink using ParaZero Safe Air system on a DJI Phantom 4. The company is utilizing the waiver to perform missions for local law enforcement as well as for generating media content as a part of the UAS Integration Pilot Program. A balloon flying near the Tustin County Fairgrounds in Wyoming was hit by a drone in August, but fortunately the balloon was not damaged and was able to land safely. It was the first reported incident in which a drone collided with a balloon. The drone operator was reportedly inexperienced and flying a drone with which he was not very familiar. He had overridden the geofencing function in the aircraft software, allowing him to operate the drone within five miles of the Driggs Reed Memorial Airport. He had not contacted ATC prior to the flight. The San Diego County Sheriff's Office has cited a drone operator for interfering with a medical rescue helicopter involved in the rescue of a shark bite victim. David Still, 57, operated his drone in an area set aside for the medical helicopter. The SCSO said that the helicopter pilot was forced to circle the landing area, delaying the pickup of Keen Weber Hayes, who had been bitten by a shark while diving for lobsters off the coast of Encinitas, California. While we're waiting for a few items that got lost in shipping, the Aero News crew has a new Mavic 2 Pro here at a and headquarters. We will be working a test program with us shortly that will rely on some highly experienced drone operators to do the initial evaluation. And we'll also be using it to break in a few non-UAV conversant staff members to drone technology and operations, allowing us to evaluate both the drone's capabilities as well as ease of use for the newbies. More information to come. 
That was our Journal Minute, and now it's time for the bad news about reauthorization, in which a few aeronautically ignorant elected officials decided to side with the commercial droners against the hundreds of thousands of model aviators that have helped build the world of aviation up to where it is today. Among the issues that the AMA has identified as troublesome are this bill does not stop the irresponsible operators and only harms our safe and long-standing community. With no justification, AMA members can no longer fly over 400 feet in Class G. This will harm or kill our sailplane, turbine, aerobatic, free flight, and large model aircraft communities. The 400-foot cap also excludes AMA in the USA for participating or hosting many world aeromodeling events sanctioned by the FAI through the AMA and NAA. The bill removes the model aircraft definition and lumps all hobbyist toys in the recreational community under the FAA as simply unmanned aircraft systems. There are testing mandates which raise many concerns. Federal and state regulations could hinder youth from participating in the testing requirement, therefore denying them enjoyment of our hobby. Beyond curtailing events and harming charities, the bill stifles youth involvement in STEM education. All of AMA's language to protect middle school and high school STEM era modeling use were removed. The bill opens the door to restrict our operations to flying sites. AMA has its work cut out for them and will be addressing these issues through legislation or regulatory changes. There is just one month to go before the first FAI World Drone Racing Championships kick off in Shenzhen, China. Some 115 of the world's best drone racing pilots from 32 nations will converge on the tech city of Shenzhen in southern China for four days of high caliber racing November 1st through 4th. Qualification and elimination rounds will play out over the long weekend before the finals. In FAI drone racing, up to six radio-controlled multi-rotor model aircraft fight it out to be the fastest around a closed circuit. Pilots must navigate a series of gates and obstacles. Whoever is fastest wins. Races typically take three minutes. Preparations are well underway in Shenzhen for the competition, which is the highest profile competition in the emerging world of drone racing. Gold, silver, and bronze medals will be awarded for first, second, and third places in four classifications, general individual, women, juniors, and national teams. A total prize pot of $220,000 is up for grabs, with the winner set to walk away with $24,000. Alongside the competition, an aviation carnival will showcase drone racing products, gaming activities, and aviation. Well, that's our program for this week. Airborne's AMA Drone Report is presented weekly in cooperation with the Academy of Model Aeronautics. And in addition to this program are Airborne Unlimited episodes covering the entire aviation and aerospace world are streamed on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net and more information on the exciting hobby drone world at modelaircraft.org. We'll see you next week.